This is John Griffin, flanker for the University of Wyoming. Griffin won't be catching any more passes for the Cowboys. He and 13 other black football players were fired by coach Lloyd Eaton for wearing black armbands to protest the racial policies of the Mormon church and its university, Brigham Young. These are the suspended athletes, the Black 14, they call them. They have risked their college education and possible professional football careers to express their feelings about the racism of the Mormon church. The Mormons believe blacks are cursed with the mark of Cain and so won't accept blacks as full members. What is more important, human rights are winning football. This is supposed to be the equality state, not the football state. I feel that this is unnecessary. This has become a racist issue, and it didn't, it wasn't intended for this. They implying that the black people do everything, but what about the white girl? We call Paulette a little nigger today. The athletes' protest against racism has brought the full weight of the state down on their heads. The administration, most of the students, and citizens of Wyoming support the coach. Eaton, a strict disciplinarian, fired the players because they violated two of his coaching rules. One, forbidding football players from taking part in student demonstrations. The other, barring the formation of factions or groups within the team. We're going to start from Thursday night. Thursday night. All right, Thursday night, we decided that uh, we should have a meeting to decide on what form of protest that we were going to have. We couldn't come to a decision, so we decided to go to Coach Eaton and discuss this matter with him. The next morning at 9.30, we entered the field house as students. Joe said, well, may we talk with you? And he said, yeah, you sure can. So uh, instead of giving us the courtesy of a conference room or a meeting room, he took us out into the stands and we sat there. And then about a minute later, he came out. Coach Eaton leaned on the railing and he said, I can save you gentlemen a lot of time uh, you're finished, you're all through. Coach students been demonstrating for some time now and wearing armbands doesn't seem to be too severe by some school standards. Do you think you may have been a little tough on these young men? Well, it seems that this is the general feeling, John, but our, there has to be a reason behind every rule. There is no rule that's set up, of course, just for the sake of a rule. It was a minute of silence and then he started pacing up and down in front of us, you know, and, uh, Joe Williams, he tried to say a few things, and uh, each time somebody tried to voice an opinion, he would say, shut up. We know that demonstrations also can break down the unity of a ball club, and this is so important. It's a team effort, and particularly football, where you're asking 11 men to work together. Then he mentioned uh, Negro relief, you know. Uh, you're not going to use the legislature's money to demonstrate. Uh, if you want to do, the, if you want to carry on this kind of action, then you can go to the Morgan States and the Gramlins. I am uh, afraid that uh, where we appear, there is liable to be some signs and some, maybe some demonstrations where our ball club appears throughout the fall. And uh, this, uh, of course, is a tragic thing. But uh, I guess, again, one of the signs of the times. BSA wanted three things. Uh, black students, uh, the football players, the athletes, wanted three things. Immediate full reinstatement, because they didn't feel they were dismissed on anything fair, immediate full reinstatement. Number two, black athletes wanted their, uh, the, the rule on which they were ostensibly dismissed, the basis was the basis for that dismissal, they wanted that rule rescinded for all sports in the university. And thirdly, the athletes wanted a positive statement by Lloyd Eaton to the effect that granted one, they were reinstated, there would be no attempt at reprisals. Obviously, there's no compromise. We're asking for dignity, and he's not conceding any. Of course, everybody wants to know, what will the black athletes do? Well, black athletes, of course, will fight until there's nothing left to fight. You've made somewhat of a sacrifice on your own, have you, standing up to these young fellows and the rules? It's sort of like a parent to the children, this hurts me as much as it hurts you. You've given up a lot of your good ball players here. It, it, it physically and mentally hurts each one of this coaching staff because I don't think that you'll find a finer or more fair coaching staff in the country than this group has been.
Last Saturday, Wyoming beat Brigham Young University 40 to 7 without 14 black players. They sat in the stands and watched the game. They had been dismissed by Coach Lloyd Eaton for taking part in a protest. Well, we weren't even given a chance. He didn't even know why we came in. We came to talk to him. No one said we were going to wear the armbands. As soon as we walked in his office, that was it. And uh, nobody's mind was made up. Coach Eaton stated that in past time, he has had some good colored boys, some good Negro boys. But now he is dealing with black men. And he doesn't know how to cope with it. The dismissal caused a great stir on campus. Meetings were held with the governor, the administration, the coach, a student faculty committee, and the Black 14. The school's position was reviewed. Then a press conference was called. Coach Eaton, President Carlson, and school officials were present. The black players were not invited. You regard that their underlying rights, their civil rights, in any way have been abrogated. The right to protest. I think that uh, you need to look at the total matter. It isn't a matter of rights to protest, but also group action. If you have group action, as I understand, I'm, I think through all these hearings, I've almost found out how to become a good football coach, too. And I think certainly one of the things is very strong discipline. And part of that is there are a number of rules. And one of the rules is group participation as well, or faction developing within a team. I don't think it matter where, where the faction is developed, it doesn't work with the team. The, the players are suspended for the balance of this football season. They're suspended on the basis that they refused to play in the last BYU game without wearing black armbands. And the number of them said they would not play football again with Lloyd Eaton as coach. So, in other words, the matter is closed as of for this uh, football season? It's closed as of the, for this season, yes, sir. A lot of people out of the 14, including myself, felt like sometimes just giving up, you know, saying to hell with this man, you know, like, let's just forget it and leave, you know, because we don't, we're not fighting for anything, you know. This Eaton has everything so tied up and has said so little in his own behalf, in his own defense, and is still winning battles. But sometimes you being the opposition in this war feel like you're being defeated, you know. The dismissal of Wyoming's 14 black athletes has spread black student unrest throughout the Western Athletic Conference. Black athletes are asking that their schools not play Brigham Young. There may be another demonstration when BYU plays at El Paso, Texas this Saturday, and the conference commissioner says, I fear it is going to get worse before it gets better. striking folk, your university homecoming parade. Again, the American pride of San Cooper, ladies and gentlemen. How privileged we are to live in this great state and this great nation. Excuse me, folks, before you go in, could I have one word with you, please? Ladies first. How do you feel about these pickets out here, ma'am? Have you ever seen anything like this before at a Wyoming homecoming game? Well, I've never been in a Wyoming homecoming game before. Well, do you know the issue involved? Uh-huh. How do you feel about it? Oh, I think it's kind of sad. In what way? Well, just that we have to do things like this. Are you uh, for the coach or the other side? How do you feel about uh, the opinion of some of these pickers out here who say that even if you're a football student, you have the right to express a dissenting opinion? I think you probably have the right, but I hate to see it at Wyoming. I think that it's a small minority, and it's a shame that it's made, blown up into such big proportions. It, it doesn't reflect the majority of the students here, and it, I really feel it's a shame. I don't see any black students marching with this demonstration. Uh, how do you account for that? Maybe they don't know what's going on. Maybe they don't know what's here. I don't know. They, it seems they are very ill-informed about things, and probably this is just another one of the things that they don't know about. Well, now, it's homecoming day, and you've worked a long time to uh, be inside there playing, and now you're out here walking. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's a great disappointment. Not so much that I'm out here walking, but the reasons as to why I'm out here walking. You know, you can hear the chanting and everything. This is all in support of Eaton. This is 
disgusting. The coach says that he doesn't really believe that the rule is what did it. He feels that somebody put you fellows up to this, that you were influenced by outside people as to make this a test case. Now, what's your answer to that? I think this is typical, and if I might use the term, something that a typical white person would say. Now, since a black man stands up for what he believes, automatically they think that some other guy had to come in and uh, instigate this thing. But this is something that is going to be happening throughout the rest of this century. Chuck, uh, to you, does this smack of racial issues? It's a cheap shot. I call it a very, very cheap shot. I think one of the real important things here is the fact that uh, the coaching staff has not uh, denied anybody the right to protest. They only have denied them the right to protest and why. They said, go right ahead. If you want to protest, go ahead. You can't have true democracy on a football field, Gene. We can't go back there and vote each play and look for a six to five vote and see whether we go off tackle, overhead, or around in. Vote to see who carries the ball, who starts the ball game. It's just impossible. Closing, take one. Wyoming's record remained unblemished today, except for the performance outside the stadium, where nobody won. John Davenport, ABC News, at the University of Wyoming, Laramie. He may decide for you. He yeah, may, man, like he may know, tell you him, that you're going to quit now, and that means that you didn't quit. He put you off, right? We're right, man. We didn't mess up. <laughs> we didn't do nothing we're like morally right, right and we're legally right. And legally right. Nobody committed themselves, man. Eaton kicked him out the office and stuff on his own, man, before he knew what, what the whole deal was about. is concerned, that the players are concerned, we have 43 dedicated men who are still on our football team, and they took a vow on Friday to do the very best they possibly could for the remainder of 1969, and Saturday they demonstrated that they meant to do just that. again. He might not be 52 years old as this one is. He may not be a football coach, but I'm going to meet him again, you know. And from this experience, I'm going to be prepared for the next coach eating. And I'm going to solve it firsthand, you know, because I made a mistake by sitting there and letting this man holler at me and my other black brothers. But I'd be damned if he walked in here now. <laughs>